this story began in about 2010 uh, when a number of communities in British Columbia were talking about uh, having to deal with deer that were living in their community. These are uh, animals that are in, um, in the BC mainland are called mule deer. Um, they have mule deer because they have great big ears uh, and they're really interesting and wonderful animals. Um, and however, they're living in people's communities in fairly large numbers, we have to admit, uh, and uh, numbering up from 100 to up to 200 in some of the communities. Um, and several of the communities there, four in the mainland of British Columbia, had decided by 2011 that they were going to uh, conduct a cull of the deer in town. And so the communities of Cranbrook, uh, Invermere, Kimberley, and Elkford applied to the ministry for a cull to, to kill the deer in town. And in fact, all four communities conducted a cull and uh, large numbers of animals died uh, during that time. And so we decided to mount a campaign to try and end that practice. There were numerous complaints uh, that occurred in town, although there were numerous people in town also who were passionately in love with the deer and wanted them to be protected at all costs. But the general level of complaints came about deer uh, pooping on their grass, eating their gardens, uh, jumping over their fences, sleeping in the backyard, where they felt that their dogs were unsafe, they couldn't have their children play in the backyard. And in some cases, although very few really when you look at the numbers, there were complaints about what people described as aggressive deer. Um, what we take a look at um, in terms of that is that these were deer that were protecting uh, their fawns. Aggression, uh, so-called aggression, that occurred in these communities occurred during the time when females had dependent fawns and when there were dogs uh, out in the community and, and the deer were def defending their fawns. So uh, yes, there are alternatives to all of this. And in fact, the city of Kimberley has done an excellent job at implementing bylaws that allow for higher fencing. Uh, that prohibit uh, the planting of flowers that attract deer, that require people who have, for example, apple trees in their yard to please clean the apple trees up so that the deer are not attracted into town. And so they've done, and, and of course, feeding deer. The big thing is feeding deer, and they found in Kimberley that there were about 100 people feeding deer. And with the bylaws put into place, uh, that number declined to five. And so, you know, there are many uh, use, there are many um, approaches that one can take that doesn't involve lethal management. The uh, way in which the deer are killed was developed in Helena, Montana, where they were killing deer in their community. And it was developed that the animals that in town, they put up what they call a clover trap. And a clover trap is simply a, a set of metal bars high enough to uh, allow the deer to go in um, and then netting over it so that when the deer go in and eat the food that's in there, it sets off the trap and the door closes and the deer can't get out. And so they stay there until uh, the cull contractor comes. And at that point, he uh, collapses the, um, the trap on the deer and then applies a bolt gun to the deer's head in an attempt to kill the deer, um, and to, to kill the deer quickly. And as uh, if, you, if you want to go and watch a video on our website, it shows you that the killing of these animals is not quite as easy and as clean as people claim. And so it's a pretty cruel thing all in all. The good news in this whole thing is that of the municipalities, of the four municipalities in the East Kootenays, uh, in, in mainland British Columbia, um, we've managed to have three of the municipalities stop the cull. So the remaining municipality is Cranbrook, and Cranbrook has been pretty stubborn through this whole thing about killing deer. And so last year they got a permit uh, for 2017, end of 2017, into early 2018 to kill 50 deer, which they did, which they proudly announced shortly after it was complete. 
And when we actually looked at the records, which we got through Freedom of Information, we found an astonishing thing. The permit allows them to kill 50 mule deer, and if they accidentally get a white-tailed deer in the net, uh, then they're allowed, if they can't release that animal uh, uh, properly, then they're allowed to kill that animal. But it's an incidental uh, take of white-tailed deer because white-tailed deer are not considered to be a problem deer. Um, at the end of the day, and looking at the records, what we found was that 40% of the animals killed 20 deer were white-tailed deer, non-target deer. And then when we drilled down through more of the data, what we found out was that 28 of the 50 deer that were killed were fawns, tiny babies that were not considered to be at all significantly problem. So what we have at the end of the day is a, a, a municipality that has killed 50 deer, of which 35 were non target animals. And so we've applied, we've written to the BC government to ask the government to not uh, give a, a new permit to Cranbrook to kill deer because they are in significant violation of the permit that they had last year. And um, so our request to you, if you feel at all inclined, which we absolutely hope you do because these are absolutely beautiful animals that don't deserve this treatment, is to write the BC minister and ask that person not to issue a permit to the city of Cranbrook. The, on the permit, a violation of the permit allows the government to deny any further permits. And that's what we're asking the government to do. So if you visit our website, um, you will uh, find, have all the information that you need uh, to write the BC government. And um, if you could do that, that would be wonderful. The more pressure we can put on them, the harder it is, gonna, is for them to issue this permit.